Hey everybody, welcome back to Knit Case Designs. My name is James, and if you're just joining me, I am the main soap maker here at Knit Case Designs. Um, today we're going to be making one of my all-time favorites for fall and winter, and really any time of year. This is the Tobacco and Bay Leaf Soap. Um, anyone who's made cold prot or any type of soap before um, has probably heard of this fragrance. It is a crowd pleaser like no other. Everyone can love this soap. This is not. This is something I think most people would describe as manly. Although I think everybody loves this fragrance. It's deep. It's woodsy. Um, it's just got such a such a depth and a warmth to it that I can really see people enjoying it all over the place. Um, I have a couple of different things going on here, as you can see. In one of my containers, I'll be coloring part of the soap with a deep gray. This is called Vintage Gray Mica from Brambleberry. Um, I actually don't think you can get this anymore. Um, I think I bought it when it was in clearance because it was being discontinued, but I have a whole bunch of it left and I only use it for this soap, so I just have a lot of it hanging around. Then I also have a bunch of activated charcoal that I have dispersed in some sweet almond oil. This is dispersed in sweet almond oil as well. And then also just some gold mica. This is King's Gold Mica from Brambleberry, um, dispersed in a little bit of sweet almond oil as well. And I'll be using that to just create kind of like a mica, um, not a, it's not gonna be a swirl. It's more like gonna be like a, a gentle line through the swirl, cause we are gonna do an in the pot swirl um, with the activated charcoal and the gray. And then, um, I'll use a little bit extra to like dock, decorate the top and texture it a little bit. Um, so I've got everything measured out here. We're going to pretty much get right to it. And then we will talk about it kind of as we go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to strain this. So the place where I get my lye, I've noticed that like, at least this past batch, like, so they're in like containers, they come like this from Nature's Garden. I love this, they're so convenient, they're great size, they, re they work really well, but sometimes I find that they have like little bits of stuff in them, like, not dirt or anything, but like, I don't know. It doesn't look like lye, it might be dirt, I have no idea. Um, I don't always see it, but I sometimes see it. So I'm just gonna strain this. And just get out any of the potentially like big gross crap. Call it a day. That'll do. Set that off to the side. I'm just gonna put it in the sink. <sighs> I don't know about you guys, but it has been just a long week. Uh, I've been working a lot at this new job. And I've been trying to install a new garden space on the side of my house. Um, I was actually planning on working on it this morning, but it rained. There was like a freak thunderstorm and it just came down. What are you gonna do? So no working on the garden for me today. However, I did manage to get outside and I pruned up a bunch of my plants because we're getting ready for you know, the transition to fall, and that means, you know, kind of doing some pruning. I've got a bunch of spider plants that had, like, shoots that I clipped off just so it can focus its energy on um, maintaining healthy foliage and roots. And then eventually I'm setting up, we're going to start cleaning in the basement to get it set up as, like, a greenhouse sort of thing so I can overwinter um, my plants. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fragrance all of this. You can see I've got a very nice light trace. This is actually just past emulsion. Um, and I'm soaping just over 100 degrees today. It's about, I think the oils were about 115 and the lye water was about 100. So they're pretty close. You want them to be generally between 10 and 20 degrees of each other. So I've got my fragrance oil here and I'm just gonna go ahead and add the whole thing. What I love about this fragrance oil, aside from literally everything, is that it doesn't discolor, it typically doesn't accelerate to anything, um, 
it retains its sense so strongly through the curing process. Sometimes you'll read about scent fading. That's pretty common in a lot of soaps. Um, we don't have that problem. Love it. So I'm going to split off a whole good amount of this right there for the gray. And then for the black, I'm going to go ahead and take out my popsicle sticks here. And just pop that right in there. See, I love activated charcoal and things like this, but it does it seem to accelerate the trace for me. Um, even when I'm working at a very low temperature, it just kind of goes. Which clays do that too. And it just has to do with the um, absorption, you know. Um, these solid particles, they absorb a lot of water. Um, so they're going to start thickening up pretty quick, just in general. And that's not a bad thing, you just have to anticipate it. So we're going to get our blender going again. Burp your stick blender, you don't want any of those bubbles. <laughs> somebody asked me recently how I get my black soap so black and this is literally how. It's just activated charcoal. I've seen people do um, activated charcoal mixed with other things like black oxide and that'll work too. Um, it's just not my preferred method. Blend on that. And this soap comes together pretty quick. There's really not a whole lot to it. Um, basically, I'm going to give everything a stir. And you can see it's still holding just a really nice, thin trace consistency. We love that. Yeah, the hardest thing about this whole soap making process is actually the cleanup. Activated charcoal does not like to come out of plastic very well. And that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir too. And then basically we're just gonna plop this in at different points and I'll add a little bit of, you know what, let me add some gold first and then I'll kind of plop down on the gold. Give this a little stir. Boop, 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 and boop. That's all we need. And then we'll go in and we'll swoop around in here. One, two, three, four. And then we'll just kind of dump the rest right on in. Scrape out your container. Get it nice and scraped out. All right, set that off to the side. And actually, I'm gonna take this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a circle, like a spiral, and then just a crisscross. So we'll start here. So spiraling in like that, criss, cross. So this is going to give us a really neat swirl. You can see the swirl kind of taking shape there. Um, and this is super nice and fluid, so it should hopefully give us a really awesome effect in the end. So now we're just going to pour from the center. I do have a backup mold off to the side for the rest of it. So get that full to the top. 
pull out our backup mold here. I don't mean to be quiet, I'm just like focusing. I always make such a mess and I'm trying so hard not to make a mess. I know it's soap making, it's messy, but I always make such a huge mess. So um, that's it for the pouring. So I'm gonna come back, we're gonna texture it and we're gonna color the top a little bit. So stay tuned. Okay, we are back and here are the two soaps exactly how we left them. I'm going to go ahead and start texturing the top. So I'm going to be using a spoon, just like a regular spoon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of gold mica on the top. I actually think I might use an eyedropper. I'm going to throw this over there and grab an eyedropper. Here we go. Just a eyedropper, pipette, whatever you want to call it. Same idea. We're just gonna kinda sort of decorate the top. And then I'm just gonna come in here with my spoon and sort of zhuzh up the top a little bit. This actually might be a little too like thin, but we'll make it work. And I'm actually not going for a whole lot. Now that I'm kind of looking at it, I really like sort of the gentle texture that's coming through. Like it'll have a little dimension, but it won't be like overwhelming. And I honestly don't want to mess up the top too much because I feel like it's going to start losing some character. I think that's actually pretty good. So I'll pull it up so you can see. So you can see we've got some little swoops there. Just give it a little texture. And that gold mica is gonna kinda seep in um, and provide like a really nice effect on the top. Continue, right? You can never leave your own work alone. Yeah, if I mess with it too much more, it's just not going to keep its sort of like character. I love it. Okay. Well, that is the making of our tobacco and bailey soap. So we'll be back to cut this tomorrow. Um, it should set up really nicely. I'm just going to leave it sitting right here. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, feel free to message me, find me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I love hearing all of your questions and seeing all the things that you've made. Um, if you decide to follow the tutorials that I put up, I've only put up one so far for the Easy Peasy Cold Process Soap. Um, but if you make that or you make a variation, please show it to me. I love seeing the things that you create. Um, if you've got other projects or fragrances that you want me to try, um, let me know like I'm committed to you know making bath and body products and I want to know what people want um, So yeah, uh, if you like the content, please like and subscribe if you um, 
want to buy anything, please keep those messages coming. I'm getting them. The shop is opening. I'm going to open a store online here in a couple weeks. I know I keep saying that, but you know, it's is what it is. I'm taking better photos now and that's kind of where I've been at. Um, but it's coming. It's coming. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, everyone have a great week and do your best and we'll be back for more soap soon. All right. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.